Deep Purple might be going space trucking, but I'm going scale trucking. Hello everyone and welcome! Today I'm excited to introduce one of the big Make It RC projects of 2024, though not literally big. An all new, easy to 3D print commercial truck chassis ready to transform your 124th or 125th scale model kits into fully functioning RC models. Today's video will be your first look at the concept and development of this new chassis, so let's dive right in. Regular viewers will be very familiar with our model car to RC conversions. It's a lot of fun to combine the great scale looks and details present on a plastic model kit and transform it into a car you can actually drive. Whether you choose to purchase a kit from us or 3D print all of the parts yourself, we offer a couple of different chassis designs ideal for these kinds of custom RC builds. That's in addition to a variety of highly detailed parts ideal for those who really want to take their RC model building to the next level. Our FFR SC1 chassis and our recently updated FPUC1 chassis are both great options for a variety of model car projects as demonstrated numerous times here on this channel. Naturally, why not extend the fun to larger commercial vehicles as well? Keeping with our tradition of creative naming, we've called this chassis the CTC01, or Commercial Truck Chassis 1. There are numerous 124th and 125th scale plastic model kits, both new and old, replicating various trucks. From semis to dump trucks, bringing many of these vehicles to life will be possible with the CTC01. A simple, durable, 3D printable, inexpensive, and easy to build chassis, inspired by the ladder frame designs present on many real world trucks. Before I began designing the chassis, I self-imposed a number of requirements for the design. To start, I wanted the chassis to be relatively simple and easy to build, not containing a huge amount of tiny parts. All the parts need to be easy to print on a typical hobby FDM 3D printer using a standard .4 size nozzle. Both the chassis and drivetrain should be relatively durable with only metal gears between the motor and wheels. The chassis needs to be adjustable so it can fit a wide variety of plastic model kits. The chassis should be designed around common, affordable components. If a generic off-the-shelf part can be adapted, use it. And finally, avoid tiny hardware, ideally M1.6 or larger. Well, I guess the tiny hardware one is sort of relative now that I think about it, but you get what I mean. I used Autodesk Fusion 360 to model the chassis. The design really started by modeling a simple mount for these N20 motor and gear reduction assemblies. They're cheap, readily available, and they're pretty easy to adapt for use on the rear drive axles, as you can see here. There is some suspension movement, but admittedly not a lot of flex with this design, but it's not like I'm trying to make a crawler. Obviously, one downside of this design choice is that it's not the most scale in appearance, though there will be plenty of room up front for either a detailed engine or the RC electronics. It is certainly a bit of a compromise, sacrificing scale realism for an easy to build and more durable drivetrain setup. Whether or not this is a deal breaker is of course up to the individual builder. Personally, I think it will be a fair compromise for having a brutally simple and durable drivetrain setup. Keep in mind that much more detailed 124th and 114th scale truck platforms already exist. These are absolutely awesome, but you have to understand these are in an entirely different price bracket and are much more complex. Some of these rigs here will set you back well over $1,000. It's all very cool, but that's not really what I'm trying to design here. This is obviously a dual motor setup if you'll be utilizing two drive axles like what I have here, but these motors don't draw that much current, and a lot of smaller size ESCs will run both of them just fine. One of the great things about these larger commercial trucks is their designs are very simple, which makes my job of replicating the chassis and smaller scale very easy. Also, while cars can vary quite a bit in the width and wheelbase, as an example, a Chevelle is both wider and has a longer wheelbase than a Camaro, which is larger than a Corvette, larger trucks seem to be a lot more standardized, at least in terms of width. There will be some variation in the width, such as the difference between a 124th and a 125th scale model, so parts to slightly increase or decrease the track width will be available. The wheelbase is a pretty easy adjustment, you just have longer frame rails and maybe add a few extra cross members along the way. There isn't even a drive shaft to worry about. One piece frame rails may be a possibility, however will only be printable on a larger build platform. Of course this chassis here is pretty short, but these two piece frame rails feel very solid, certainly more than suitable for a model build like this. 
Looking at the front end, it's a very simple straight axle with steering and leaf springs. The steering servo fits quite nicely at the very front of the chassis. I did take a little inspiration from FMS with the slot the servo in one side and secure it with a screw on the other side. It works quite well here. These leaf springs that I have on currently are quite rigid. I do plan to make them a bit thinner and use coil springs to support the weight of the chassis with the leaf springs being more for show and to keep the axle in place. Simple coil springs are also what support the rear. I think incorporating a simple way to adjust the rear suspension, sort of like on the real thing, would be awesome, but I'm not sure how feasible that will be. We'll see though. Obviously at this stage, there's still plenty more design work to do. I've yet to dive into creating any sort of body mounts or a fifth wheel, but I've got a solid base that I can begin testing and fine tuning. I've got the first prototype built, so of course I've got to do a little driving. Brace yourself everyone for this drive by. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Now first thing I want to mention right off the bat is that these motors are rated for 12 volts. As I'm currently only using a 2S LiPo, which is feeding at about 7 to 8 volts, the motors are a bit slow and lacking some torque. On 3S I wouldn't say they run fast, but they'll have more power and will run at a more reasonable speed. Expect a demonstration of this running on 3S in a future video. But hey, it works, and after hours spent designing this chassis, it's very satisfying to see it drive. Now the front wheels can turn pretty sharp, so the turning radius will be quite good, but as you might have noticed there is some understeer, or basically the front wheels are getting pushed. Part of this is because there are no differentials in those rear drive axles, so all the wheels are spinning at the exact same speed, but probably the bigger factor here is there's just not that much weight in the front right now. Getting some weight up front should help a lot. I can also see if adjusting the Ackerman angle can help as well. I'm pretty sure just putting the electronics more towards the front of the chassis and getting the body put on top will help a lot, but a little bit of weight can always be added to the front if needed. We'll see how well it performs as I progress with this project. There are a few things you should know before you decide to build one of these chassis. While we have designed this in a way to make it as easy to 3D print and assemble as possible, I would still only recommend this for more experienced RC and model building enthusiasts. Keep in mind some custom work will be required to adapt the model kit onto the chassis, and of course you'll need to come up with a way to hide all of the RC electronics either within the body or the chassis, which may be more or less difficult depending on the electronics you choose and the truck that you're building. At times you might have to think outside the box and expect a bit of creativity and problem solving to be part of the building process. If you enjoy custom building RC vehicles, particularly smaller scale ones, I think you'll have a lot of fun and success with this platform. Another thing to be aware of is that these trucks are not going to be especially fast or strong. As I said earlier, on 3S this truck will be able to travel at more reasonable speeds and will have more torque. Incorporating larger, stronger, and faster N50 size motors are also a current consideration. Don't expect these trucks to be able to haul a ton of weight. They will certainly be able to haul around the plastic trailer model kits that are sold alongside these truck models, but don't expect to be able to hop on the trailer and have this truck pull you around, as can be the case with some larger and more expensive RC models. And finally, as stated before, this truck does not have the most lifelike drivetrain and suspension layout, particularly in the rear. Just a few things that you should consider before building a CTC-01. Also, please be aware that this is still a work in progress, and the first batch of files have not yet been released. I'm not sure exactly when the files will be posted onto Patreon, but of course there will be an announcement when they are. If there's sufficient interest, we will probably release a few kits for people who do not want to 3D print their own parts. Obviously though, that won't happen until the design is much more finalized, so don't expect to see any kits anytime soon. These videos and 3D printable RC chassis are helped made possible by the great support from our generous members over on Patreon. Just a few bucks gives you access to tons of STL files that you can 3D print at home. If you're interested in becoming a member, check out the link below in the description. We already have a ton of STL files over there for you to start a custom RC project with, but again please be aware that this chassis here will not be posted until a later date. 
Of course, if this project is of interest to you, make sure you stay tuned to this channel and our social media pages, also linked below in the description, as you'll be among the first to know when the STL files become available. Just consider this video here a little introduction. Obviously, more videos on this chassis, including a full build tutorial, will be posted as time progresses. Till then, we greatly appreciate your support, and I hope you'll stick around as we continue to tweak this design and, of course, build the first truck. As always, thanks everyone for watching, and stay tuned for more updates.